Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's say hello to all these uh, D block elements before we start the chapter. Let's understand these D block elements. Let's see how they look. We'll start with scandium. This is the element scandium. And the atomic number is 21. And the short name is SC. It is again silvery white soft metal. We'll see most of the metal in the D block elements will be silvery. Few exception, copper gold, but most of them will be silvery. It was discovered in 1879 by spectral analysis. And they did the spectral analysis from mineral and this mineral was from Scandivia, Scandinavia. Since this mineral was from this place, the name Scandium came. Okay, discovered in 1879 by spectral analysis from the mineral from Scandinavia. So this is used in the nuclear reactor, seed germination and high intensity light, we use scandium. Actually, you will see most of the D block elements when it is, it is little reactive to air. So this also when it is oxidized, when it is in air, it develops slightly yellowish or pinkish color or you can say it is oxidized by air and it form thin film it form oxide oxide coating i'll say and because of this further oxidation is prevented we must have studied about zinc zinc is also little reactive sorry aluminium aluminium is also little reactive but we still use aluminium for the vessels in the kitchen why because aluminium also reacts with oxygen and forms a protective layer and it doesn't react further but in case of iron iron react with air to form this rust but this rust doesn't form a protective coating it peels off and thus iron rust and rust and rust but these other uh, most of the other d block elements when it reacts with oxygen it forms a protective layer of oxide and this layer itself prevents further oxidation if you understand why uh, we have iron behaving differently and other D block elements behaving differently. Okay. And you'll see in most of this case, they'll be silvery white and they'll be oxidized by air and they'll form oxide coating, which will prevent further withering and uh, reaction. Okay. And it exists naturally also. It has stable uh, isotropes. It has a good number of isotopes. It has 13 isotopes. Some of them are reactive also. And some of them are radioactive also. So it has radioactive isotopes. And it has stable isotopes also. And this also we'll see for most of the D block elements. They'll have stable isotopes also and they'll have some radioactive isotopes. Okay, uh, no, and please note earlier these D block elements were called rare because that time they didn't know that uh, they didn't know how to extract them and they thought it's rare. But actually, these D block elements are not so rare. If you see this scandium, this is 50th most common element on earth. So, if you note this. Earlier, these D block elements were called rare elements, but not now. Why? Because earlier they thought it is rare, but actually, with technology evolution, they found that it is not rare. Okay. Now, but since they have similar physical properties and chemical properties, it is difficult to differentiate between these D block elements. We will show you that. All the D block elements will look almost the same. The next is titanium. Again, the atomic number 22, short name Ti. 
This is also if you see the lustrous metallic metal, silvery in color, little low density, high strength. It is resistant to corrosion. It is actually titanium is so good that even aqua regia which dissolves gold does not have impact on titanium. It was discovered pretty early because these metals are non-reactive so it was pretty discovered pretty early 1791 please not see you see this trend if the element is reactive it was discovered later if the element is not reactive for example gold titanium silver they are they were discovered pretty earlier so it was discovered in 1791 and this was named after greek mythology titans these titans were very strong not react they're very strong these metals were also not reactive high strength low density so it has all it had all the good features about I mean, that you expect in a metal and thus they were named from this greek my word titans they are greek mythological characters they were very strong this titanium is also paramagnetic and it has low electrical conductivity. Since it is not that reactive, this titanium is used for replacement joints. Replacement joints, so if somebody has a knee problem and they want to replace this uh, kneecap, here titanium is used for replacement joint. It is also used for engine blades, engine blades. It is also used for spacecraft. Spacecraft, you need uh, something which is light, something which is strong, something which is non-reactive. But it is costly. It is costly. Okay. Here also, it has uh, five stable isotopes and almost eleven radioactive isotopes. So it has both stable and radioactive isotopes, and you will see. In most of the uh, D block will have stable and radioactive isotopes. The next is vanadium, short name is V, atomic number 23. It is again hard, and ductile, malleable, it is also corrosion resistant. Why it is corrosion resistant? See the titanium was corrosion resistant because it was not reacting at all. Vanadium is corrosion resistant because it forms oxide film. It forms oxide layer and this oxide layer protects further oxidation. Okay, and since you hear on you can guess since it forms oxide layer, that means it will not be found in not found in pure state. Why? Because now only we saw that it forms oxide layer, that means it is it reacts with oxygen. So this is not in free state, took some time, 1801, it was found in Mexico, right? And this uh, was uh, almost same as lead actually, and they were they're calling as brown lead. They thought that they have found a new lead called brown lead. And this is named after Vanadis. What is Vanadis? Vanadis is nothing but my goddess of beauty and fertility. So she is the goddess of beauty and fertility. And why? See, Vanadium compound has a lot of colors. Since a lot of colors this vanadium compound has, a lot of colors depicts what? Beauty. You will see girls, they wear a lot of colors, pink, blue, black, whatever they want to wear. So, and a lot of colors, rainbow colors, a lot of colors gives a, a beautiful look. 
and thus since it has lot of colors it is named after goddess of beauty that is vanilla okay and if you see a good implementation of uh, vanadium is v2o5 this is a catalyst used in the production of sulfuric acid and it is also used vanadium is also used to form iron alloys steel magnets okay so we talk about chromium atomic number 24 and the symbol is cr it's again steel gray lustrous metal this is brittle this is not uh, ductile or malleable so you you see that not all the d block elements are malleable and ductile it has high melting point but and it uh, it has a good shine that's why you use chromium plating uh, metals in bikes cars chromium finished say but is brittle it has high shine from the moment you think of chromium you think of high shine again this since it has high shine this word came from greek word called chroma right chroma means again colored and this all this chromium compounds are also colored so this came from greek word chroma please note that chromium is carcinogenic carcinogenic it is carcinogenic that means it cause cancer okay chromium is carcinogenic this is used for its magnetic property it is anti ferromagnetic and as i told the main use of chromium is electroplating so we we see a lot of uh, bikes handles in the car uh, handles uh, car door uh, handles a lot of small small things in the cars they are chromium plated because it has good shine so how they are they are all chromium plated using electroplating okay chromium is also used to prepare so i'll write here it is the main use of chromium is electroplating it is also used to prepare stainless steel okay and if you talk about rubies if you have seen the ruby the red color rubies the color in the rubies is nothing but chromium it is because of chromium that it has that color okay and this is the 22nd most abundant element in the earth crust okay so typically you get this element from volcanic eruption again it also has stable and radioactive isotopes three stable and 19 radioactive thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again